national insurance, that little deduction at the bottom of your payslip that no one really talks about. Well, you may want to start paying more attention because it's about to go up. This week, on Tuesday the 7th of September, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that there will be an increase to the national insurance rate, totalling around £12 billion in extra taxes per year. And this is despite a manifesto pledge stating that there will be no increase to national insurance rates. This increase will not only affect employees in full-time work, but it will also affect employers and people who are self-employed. So in this video, we'll hear from Boris Johnson and his Chancellor Rishi Sunak on their plans to increase the national insurance, as well as getting a response from the opposition, Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party. And I'll also discuss how these changes could affect you going forward. But before we get into all that, there may be some of you wondering what is national insurance and what is national insurance used for? Well, national insurance is basically a tax on earnings or a tax on profits if you're self-employed for anyone aged between 16 and a state pension age. Your national insurance contributions are paid into a fund from which some state benefits are paid. This includes the state pension, statutory sick pay or maternity leave, or some entitlement to additional unemployment benefits. There are different national insurance class rates and how much you pay will depend on your employment status and how much you earn. What you can see on screen now is the national insurance class rates and how much you're expected to pay for the 2021 to 2022 financial year. However, this is all about to change so let's hear from Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak on their plans to change national insurance rates. For more than 70 years, we've lived by the principle that everyone pays through, through our taxes for the NHS. So it's there for all of us when we need it. In that spirit, from April, we will have a new UK-wide 1.25% health and social care levy on earned income, with the money required by law to go directly to health and social care across the whole of our United Kingdom. And those who earn more will pay more, including those who continue to work after the state, over the state pension age. No one earning less than £9,568 will pay a penny. And this new investment will go alongside vital reform. Because we learned from the pandemic that we can't fix the NHS unless we also fix social care. So we're doing something that frankly should have been done a long time ago. We're setting a limit to what people will ever have to pay, regardless of assets or income. In England, from October 2023, no one starting care will pay more than £86,000 over their lifetime. No one with assets of less than £20,000 will have to pay anything at all. And anyone with assets of between £20,000 and £100,000 will be eligible for means-tested support. So I'll be absolutely frank with you, this new levy will break our manifesto commitment but a global pandemic wasn't in our manifesto either. I'd like to address straight away the following question. Why do we need to raise taxes? Three reasons. First, we need to properly fund the NHS as we recover from the pandemic. The second reason is that the social care plans announced today have created an expanded safety net. Instead of individuals having to bear the financial risks of catastrophic care costs themselves, we as a country are deciding to share more of that risk collectively. The third reason we need to raise taxes is to fund the government's vision for the future of health and social care. Properly funded, we can tackle not just the NHS backlog and expand the social care safety net. We can afford the nurses' pay rise, invest in the newest, most modern equipment, prepare for the next pandemic, and provide one of the largest investments ever to upskill social care workers. So there's a number of key things to take away from this announcement. For anyone who earns more than £9,564 per year, there will be a national insurance rise of 1.25%. And this includes people who are above state pension age, who were previously exempt from paying national insurance. They say that the money raised from the 1.25% increase will be ring-fenced and will only be used specifically to help clear the NHS backlog due to the pandemic and also to help with the reform of the social care system. This reform will mean that there'll be a limit to the amount that you'll have to pay for social care. And if you have a low amount of savings, the government will cover all of the costs. The Prime Minister also stated that the reason that they're going back on their promise to not increase taxes in their manifesto is because of the pandemic. They say that they didn't plan for a pandemic in their manifesto and that a tax rise is necessary. Now on the surface, it's hard to argue with that reasoning. Currently, people who suffer with things like dementia or Alzheimer's are expected to sell their homes or use their life savings just to cover the astronomical costs of social care. And with one in seven people expected to find themselves in this situation, I'm sure if you ask most taxpayers, they would be okay to support a system that provides a better level of care 
and at a cheaper cost to the individual. But having said all that, let's hear from Keir Starmer to get the opposition's view on the proposed changes. The pandemic has undoubtedly placed the NHS under huge strain, but that is only part of the story. A decade of conservative neglect weakened the NHS. Waiting lists had spiralled up two million before the pandemic. Targets were missed on cancer, on A&E, on mental health before the pandemic. The same is true, Mr Speaker, on social care. £8 billion cut despite growing demand before the pandemic. Carers on poverty wages without secure contracts before the pandemic. 100,000 vacancies before the pandemic. So the pretense that the Prime Minister is only here because of the pandemic is not going to wash. He's putting a sticking plaster over gaping wounds which his party inflicted. He made that commitment on social care before the pandemic and he said he would pay for it without raising taxes before the pandemic. (laughs) Mr Speaker, turning to social care, under these proposals, people will still face substantial costs. And I heard what the Prime Minister says, so another direct question for him. Can the Prime Minister guarantee that under his plan, no one will have to sell their home to fund their own care? Yes or no? But social care, Mr Speaker, is about so much more than this. The blunt, the blunt and uncomfortable truth is that under the Prime Minister's plans, the quality of care received will not improve. There's no plan for that. People will still go without the care that they need. There's no plan for that. Unpaid family carers will still be pushed to breaking point. There's no plan for that. Working age adults with disabilities will have no more control under their lives. There's no plan for that. Pay and conditions will not improve for care workers. There's no plan for that. Let me spell that out. Let me spell that out. A poorly paired K-work, a poorly paired K-worker, care worker will pay more tax for the care that they're providing without a penny more in their pay packet and without a secure contract. This is a tax rise that breaks a promise that the Prime Minister made at the last election. A promise that they all made at the last election, every single one of them. A tax rise, a tax rise on young people, supermarket workers and nurses. A tax rise, Mr Speaker, that means a landlord renting out dozens of properties won't pay a penny more, but the tenants working in full-time jobs would. A tax rise that places another burden on business just as they're trying to get back on their feet. Mr Speaker, read my lips. The Tories could never again claim to be the party of low tax. As you can see, there's two sides to every story, and it looks like the 1.25% national insurance rate increase will not be used for the reform of social care, at least not at the start anyway. This is because it's going to take years for the NHS backlog to be cleared, meaning that people will still likely have to sell their homes and use their life savings to pay for social care. The Tory MP Stephen McPartland said, the new health and social care levy provides no new funding for social care for at least three years. No money for living costs, only personal care costs, Selling your home is just deferred. It is a tax on jobs. I need much more detail to even consider supporting it. Political correspondent Peter Walker said, Key lessons from the press conference is that the national insurance rise is, for the foreseeable future, much more of an NHS backlog levy than a social care levy. And with Sajid Javid unable or unwilling to say when even half the money will be spent on social care or when the backing might be cleared. And Kate McCann, a political correspondent for Sky said, Crucial responses from the press conference for me was Sajid Javid admitting he can't say how much money social care will actually get and when, because it all depends on how NHS gets on with clearing the backlog. And NHS bosses say it could take 10 years. Whether or not we agree with the reasoning behind it, or if we think the social care system will actually change at all, the fact remains that the national insurance rates will increase in April 2022 by 1.25%, and that's for everyone. National insurance is paid by employees, employers, and the self-employed. So how will this affect you going forward? If you're an employee, you're most likely paid through a system called PAYE or pay as you earn. This system basically means that your income tax and national insurance are deducted from your wages automatically before you are paid. So in terms of logistics, you don't need to worry about doing anything differently because it will already be done for you automatically. But you will notice an extra deduction at the bottom of your pay slip each month. Employers pay national insurance contributions on their employees' earnings. The amount payable depends on two factors the amount that their employees are earning and their national insurance category letter. As an example, employers pay class one national insurance contributions of 13.8% on all earnings 
above the secondary threshold for almost all employees. This rate has remained the same for several years, but with these changes, it will increase. This has caused a lot of angry business owners to speak out. After a tough 18 months for everyone, a lot of small businesses are struggling to rebuild and stay afloat. So an increase in their national insurance bill is just another nail in the coffin for many. If you're self-employed, national insurance is basically a tax on your profits. When you're self-employed, you need to organise your national insurance contributions yourself. And this is usually done when you do your self-assessment tax return. So going forward, you can expect to deduct an extra 1.25% from your profits. So what do you think of the changes to the national insurance rates? Do you think it's being done for a good cause and you're happy to pay it? Or is it just another way for the government to raise money and not make any real change? Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.